Today I'm upgrading my satanic leaf tail gecko to a new habitat using a leaf habitat. Let's roll the tape. Mm. Man, nobody wants to watch this part. Don't worry, I got you, dude. Pocus, pocus, alakazam. Man, that feels good. Man, I just really love the printing of these leaf habitats. I mean, dude, look at that. That looks dope, dude. All right, now that I have this cage built, I'm gonna be using this cork tile and I'm gonna be having it as background in here, but I don't like how flat this cork tile is. It's just something about it. it's just too clean looking for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a piece of cork branch like this. I'm gonna put it on the cork tile and then I'm gonna use some expanding foam to hold it down in place. And as I'm waiting for this to cure out, I'm gonna grab a piece of black foam board, place it down on the table, then I grab some more cork hollow tubes, and I'm gonna be placing them down on the board, and then I use more expanding foam to help keep it hold in place. All right, the expanding foam has cured out, and I realized I went a little heavy on it, but that's totally okay, as I'm gonna be carving out all the smooth surfaces, and then I'm gonna cover it all with silicone, and then I'm gonna apply my media over it that just consists of sand, organic potting soil, and orchid bark. This will help it all blend in and look nice and natural. And then after that's done curing out, I cut it all around the edges to make it like little pieces. Then I grab a pair of scissors and cut off the excess foam board around the hardscape. And now I'm going to remove the screen top of this cage. And now that I'm done with my hardscape pieces, I'll just be setting them against the wall of the enclosure and then using half inch screws and then drilling them in. Solid. And then for my next step, I'll be adding a drainage layer. I'll be using Lika clay pebbles. I'd like to get this about one inch thick. And then I cut out some weed fabric. I'll be using this as a substrate barrier. Then I'll be using my homemade terrarium substrate that consists of orchid bark, sphagnum moss, and organic potting soil, and a little bit of wash play sand. And then I get it up to level right here with the little bottom door. And now I'm gonna spice up the enclosure by adding some Spanish moss along some parts of the hardscape pieces. And I pin it down by using some garden wire. All right, now to my favorite part of these builds, planting it. And for my first plant, I'll be using a Bella Palm plant. I'll be placing this along the back and the sides. It makes a really good coverage and it just looks really awesome. And by the way, guys, I always wash the roots of the plants off. And then for my next plant, I'll be using this ficus ginseng. It's essentially just a little bonsai plant, but I think it looks really cool, and I'm gonna place it right there. Next, I'm gonna be adding this little manzanita branch, and I'm gonna be placing it right here in the back, and these little leaf tail geckos love climbing on this. So it'll be really cool to see them climb on this and just hide onto it during the day. And for my last plant, I'll be using a false aria. And I really love the texture on these leaves. Just something about them I just really love. Then I'm gonna be using this little birch log and I'm gonna be placing right here in the back right corner. And now it's time to add some leaf litter to give that forest floor look. And guys, I totally forgot that I got this little air plant right here that I'm gonna stick right over there. And I'm gonna have it mounted by using garden wire and the sides of the garden wire will pin right there into the phone. Now we're gonna add some orange powder isopods. And now for the springtails. Then I'm gonna throw in some small pieces of cork bark. This will just be some botanicals for the isopods. Just toss them in like nothing. And now it's time to put the lid back on. About time. All right, now that I'm finally done building the enclosure, 
We're gonna put him in and then we're gonna go over equipment. But if you guys stick around to the end, I got a really cool surprise for you that you don't wanna miss. And now for the star of the show, my satanic Luke Tail Gecko. So this guy's a male and his name is Trico. I know, pretty basic Pokemon name, right? But it's kind of fitting though. I mean, look at him, dude. And what's actually really cool about this guy, which I don't think the camera will be able to pick up, is that he actually got these like green patches, a little lichen on him, where it looks like little patches of moss. But he's really cool. So he doesn't really move around during the day. So like during the day, he just sits there on the branch, wide open. It's kind of cool with these guys. They don't try to hide during the day. They're just, they rather would be just straight out in the open, like a dead leaf. And it's really awesome so i love seeing him then but like during the night he will like fire up and his eyes will get beat red and these guys are actually really active during the night they'll hop from like branch to branch they're always like hunting and on the lookout and it's just super rad and guys for the enclosure itself i'm going to totally sound biased for it but i absolutely love it i just love the way how the plants actually like perfectly contrast the hardscape and just right and i really do love how there's actually shadows in the back lower area i just feel like it makes everything pop and have more of a 3d effect and guys, when you're setting up your enclosure for your leaf tail geckos, you don't want it actually too busy. You kind of want it open a little bit like this because these guys, they're actually really not that good of hunters. Like in the wild, I believe that they primarily eat slow moving snails. So keep a little bit open like this. And as for my equipment over here for the LED lighting, I'm just using a Night Crew LED aquarium light that I got off of Amazon. This is what I always use for all my bioactive builds. It grows my plants just fine. And what's really cool about this one, it has a blue midnight effect. So like during the night, you could turn it on and could adjust the levels of it so you could actually see them walking around and stuff and doing their thing. But yeah, I'll leave Amazon links in the description down below. And I actually do have a little bit of UVB on this guy. I'm using an Arcadia Pro T5 5.0. And now these guys don't really actually need it, but it never hurts to actually use some of it. It can be beneficial for these guys. And he actually has plenty of shading to escape the UVB if he needs to. All right guys, now for the surprise that I promised. But the surprise is that I actually just recently got a female satanic leaf tail gecko from my friend Nina. And this girl, is she's so freaking cute. However, she's not old enough to be put in with my male yet. She's only five months old. And if you guys actually look at the difference between the two in sizes, the male is actually about twice her size. And I think this male is about 14 months old or so. So I got about probably another half year till they're actually able to be put together. But in case you guys didn't know, the difference between a male and the female is that you can sex them by the tail. While the males usually have like little holes throughout their tails, it can vary. And the females have a full on fledged leaf. So that's how you can sex the two. But until the female is actually old enough to go in with the male, I'm gonna be placing her in the male's old enclosure, this little 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra. And see, this is what I was talking about. You want it wide open, right in here, not too busy, just enough where she can walk around and hunt. So this is a setup you can do for an actual exoterra versus a leap habitat. But personally, I love these leap habitats a lot more. They're wider, they just have a lot more space and they look a lot nicer. All right guys, my name's Ronnie and you're watching Modding Morphing Reptiles. Peace.